Hi friends, my name is Maruti and I am the co-founder of Traku. In this video, we will be doing the analysis for Dashcard 6. If you have not attempted Dashcard 6, please go to our website and uh, take it first before you look at this analysis. So, let us get started. We will first discuss the verbal section. The verbal section, I think, uh, was not a very difficult section. This was definitely on the slightly easier uh, kind of verbal sections. So, this, I would say, is slightly scoring. The reason for that is because there were four RCs and all the four RCs, I think, were easy to read. Uh, and even some of the questions, even though they were inference based questions, the inference based questions were not very difficult. For example, some of the questions involved uh, something like all of the following will negate what the author is saying uh, except one, which essentially basically means that you have to figure out which of the following four options will be something which the author will agree with. So the inference was not very difficult once you are able to get a hang of it. So even the inference based questions, even though they were there, the actual inference that is needed is many times just finding out which of the following will the author agree with. So, in that case, I felt the inference uh, is not a negation. So, it was easy to actually for your mind to actually figure out which of the following is true. Having said that, let us go through all the four uh, RCs in detail. The first RC was in solar eclipse. Uh, this was solar eclipse. There was some history given about uh, solar eclipses and all this. Initially, when I looked at it, I thought the topic was not something that I was interested in. So, I didn't actually attempt it at the start because I thought it will be a dry passage. It might be a passage where I will get uh, stuck or I might lose concentration. I attempted it at the end, but this was actually a fairly straightforward and simple passage to read. This was a fairly easy passage to read. I didn't get stuck anywhere. So, this was, I think, an easy passage. The next uh, RC was with respect to, I think, uh, gods and the economy of gods. This, I think, was uh, towards the end, it became slightly complicated. But again, for the first three to four paragraphs, the passage was not difficult to read. Uh, I could understand what the author was saying. The line of thought of the author was also clear. But towards then, it became slightly difficult. So, I put this as medium, especially because uh, on its own, it might not be a very difficult passage. But in comparison to the other RCs, I think this was slightly on the more medium side. The third RC that we had was with respect to cloud seeding and rains in the Middle East. Very straightforward passage, but again, unfortunately, when I looked at it, I thought this was a science and technology passage. So, I didn't attempt it at the start because I thought this might, again, I might get stuck somewhere. But this, I felt, was a fairly simple, straightforward passage. Even the questions were not very difficult. This, I think, is probably the easiest of the four RCs. This is something that you should definitely attempt. Uh, there was no complication there. The passage was easy to read. The questions also were straightforward. The fourth RC, I think, was slightly on the more difficult side. Uh, this was with respect to Rome and uh, I think the power structures, uh, there were some elements of socialism also involved with respect to the democracies and monarchy, all of those things. This was actually unfortunately the first written, uh, passage I attempted because I thought this was related to history where I would be a little more interested in. Uh, but I found this difficult. So I think because I chose this as the first passage to attempt, also I think uh, my score was not ideal. I could have scored probably higher. But uh, this was slightly difficult to read the passage, trying to get an understanding. Uh, even though individual paragraphs I was understanding, individual sentences I was understanding, I was not getting a clear sense of the author. What exactly does the author feel? It was not something that I was intuitively getting. And when I attempt a passage, I want that intuitive understanding of being able to put myself in the shoes of the author. If I start thinking like the author, then answering the four questions become very easy. Here, I think individual paragraphs I was getting, but I was not getting the flow of the thinking of the author. So, I was not very sure and my accuracy also in this RC was not very good. Like I mentioned earlier, this was the first RC that I started, which I think was slightly on the more difficult side, because of which I uh, didn't do too well in this particular section. So, choosing of the right uh, order in which you select the RCs also is very important. Now, coming to the verbal section, the para summaries I found to be on the difficult side, but many people, if you see, did actually quite well in the para summaries, which was uh, surprising. But I definitely thought both the para summaries uh, were not very easy. Uh, normally, I'd get at least one of the two para summaries correct. Here I got uh, both the para summaries wrong and it was not as if I was even close. Uh, I found both the para summaries to be uh, very difficult to read. And I felt that some of the options that were given were not uh, like completely giving the gist of what the para summary was. So for me, I felt uh, para summaries were on the difficult side. But because most people got it correct, uh, for that reason, we are putting this as medium para summaries. Para jumbles, I thought uh, there was one which was very straightforward. Even the second one, I came very close. In para jumbles, you have four sentences and you have to jumble them up. So, it is very important for you to actually find the linkages between different different sentences. In both the para jumbles, I was able to get most of the connections between different uh, sentences correct. 
But in one of them, I missed out on one connection because of which I got wrong. But the second one, I got it correct. Essentially, I think parajumbles this time was definitely on the easy to medium side because it is easy to get uh, at least two sentences connected in both the parajumble questions. The next one was uh, uh, odd one out, which is basically you have to figure out which of the five sentences uh, is not uh, part of that uh, parajumble. This I thought was slightly on the, one of the questions was definitely on the difficult side. One of them, I think I was able to get it. So again, I put para uh, this oops, that out of context one to be on the medium side. Para insertions, which is the last part of verbal, I think was definitely easy. Both the questions, I think I got it correct and I was very confident of it also, which I assume uh, most people also will get it correct. So para insertions, I think uh, was definitely on the easy side. Overall, if you're looking at the section as a whole, I think uh, if you score around 38 to 40 marks, you can expect 9 percentile if this kind of a paper comes in the actual examination. This I think was not a very difficult uh, section. Definitely verbal sections can be more difficult than this. They can also be more easier than this. But this I think was definitely on the easy to medium side, the section as a whole. Especially just to reiterate, RCs were easy to read. There were very few RCs where you completely get stuck in a set. The inference based questions also which were asked in the RCs. I think if you just think about it for a few seconds, you will figure out what exactly is the inference being asked. And many times the inference that was being asked was not negating what the author was saying. My mind I think is, uh, and I think which is the case for most students, we think easily if we know what exactly the author is saying. Trying to find out which of the following the author will disagree with, I think is slightly more difficult. But most of the inference based questions were essentially what the author was saying. If you uh, strip out on the complexities in which the question was phrased. So I think the inference based questions were, were also easy. Verbal section I think was slightly on the medium to difficult side. There were four questions in verbal which were easy. Two of them were the para insertion questions. And there were four questions which were moderate. I think para summary is slightly on the moderate side. Para one of the para jumbles moderate side. Out of context also one of them was on the moderate side. Overall I think if you score, if you are aiming for 90 percentile you should score about 38. If you are uh, doing uh, well, if your accuracy is good I think you can do that. Let us now look at the LRDI section. With respect to LRDI, I think this was definitely slightly on the tougher side. The selection of sets is very, very important. I think there were three sets which uh, if you spend around 20 to 25 minutes, they can be solved. One of them is the quant based LR. This I think is amongst all the four sets, the easiest of uh, the lot. Although this is not a trivial set, this is not a set that can be solved in less than 10 minutes. But if you go in thinking that I have around 15 to 20 minutes and I want to solve it, I think this is a set that can be answered. The games and tournaments is a quintessential set. It is a very typical games and tournament set which has round robin uh, league and you have to figure out uh, against different different teams what is the scores of the matches that happened. This also is a set that can be solved in 20 minutes. I first selected the DI chart set. This set I thought uh, would be the easiest of the lot because this is a DI set. I knew that it would be slightly time consuming. That is the reason I attempted it. But I thought that even if I uh, waste some time, I would definitely get all the questions correct. However, uh, this took me a lot more time than what I would have actually wanted to take. I think I took around 25 minutes in solving this. I don't think I did a good job. A good student, a normal student who is looking to score well in CAT, I think uh, if they put in good effort and they don't uh, lose uh, any of the important clues, uh, some of the clues that I missed, I think they should be able to solve it in say around 15 to 18 minutes, maybe in 20 minutes. I made one big mistake where uh, I made an error and because of it for me to correct it back and all it took me around 25 minutes. But if you don't make those kind of mistakes, I think this is a set that can be solved in around 20 minutes. Overall, this is not an easy sectional. There are no sets which are very easy. Uh, but having said that, a good student, somebody who is aiming to score say 90 percentile plus should be able to solve at least one set. There are three sets, this one, this one and this one. If you give time, you will be able to solve at least one of these three. A good student, somebody who is aiming to score above 85 to 90 percentile should be able to score at least one of these four sets. Now, with respect to the percentile, I think like I mentioned earlier, uh, this is a tough section. This is not a very easy section. So the 99 percentile, I think would be around 18 to 20 marks. That is, you have to definitely get one set completely correct. And in addition to it, maybe you have to get a few questions correct. Uh, the there is difficulty in actually getting clues from the options. Sometimes I mention that if you are not able to solve a set, look at the questions, you will get some uh, clues from those options. But in this particular case, I think in the quant based LR over here, in the quant based LR set, I was able to get some clues from the options. Uh, I don't want to reveal more about it. But other than that, I think in the other uh, sets, it is difficult to get any clues from the sections. Now, it is very important for people to actually select the right sets. Like I mentioned earlier, I selected the DI chart first and I wasted around 20 to 25 minutes on it because of which I was left with very little time. 
But somebody who would have selected either the Quant based LR set or the Games and Tournament set, I think would have a far easier time. So that I think is about it. Now let us look at the Quant section. The Quant section was definitely on the more difficult side. Uh, this was a section where we tried to mimic something uh, which has come in CAT 2023, where the questions were all uh, pretty difficult. But uh, there were also some easy questions, some sitter questions that we put into this 22 questions. If you are going through it uh, topic wise, let me look at the topics. The topics of ratio and proportion, I think there were three questions in it. One question was a complete sitter. Uh, and the other two also were not very difficult. Although, unfortunately, not many people got the questions correct. If you attempt it without the examination pressure, without the mock pressure, I think all the three questions in ratio and proportion should have been answered by a good student. Uh, and one of those three questions, I think, was a complete sitter. In geometry, there were, I think, four questions. I think in geometry, all the four questions were not very easy. But they were, I think, uh, formula-based questions. At least one of them was formula-based. So if you know the formula, I think you will get it correct. And many times I advise people to not uh, mug up formulas. But that was one of the reasons I gave uh, these questions in the dash card because I thought these were important formulas. Basically, the formula, if you haven't taken the mock, uh, this will be like a spoiler for you. But uh, the formula that is needed is the number of scaling triangles that can be formed if you are given a particular perimeter or the number of uh, triangles that can be formed with integer sides for a given perimeter. These are two formulas that uh, are needed to solve that one particular question. If you know that the formula, you will get the question. Again, of the four questions, I don't think any of those four questions in geometry was a sitter. No question will be done within, let's say, 30 seconds. Like in ratio and proportion, where there are, I think, one or two questions which are fairly very straightforward. The next thing is with respect to linear equations. I think there were two questions in linear equations. One of them, I think, if you know the trick, you will be able to get it uh, quite quickly. It is not basically a trick. It is about how you can factorize a linear equation. Uh, but both the questions again are not complete sitters but at least one of the question is definitely doable it is not a very difficult question if you spend say even somebody who doesn't know how to factorize or how to solve it if they spend say two or three minutes they should be able to get that question correct this is as far as linear equations is concerned again not a straightforward uh, bunch of questions but not impossible to do there is one question in logarithms which i think is a uh, not a very difficult question but again you should know the theorem Basically, if you are given an exponent, you should know how to calculate the number of digits in that exponent. If you know it, this is a very simple, very straightforward question. And I would expect somebody who is preparing for CAT to know that uh, theorem. So, logarithm question, I think, is not a very difficult question. Next, coming to number systems. Number systems, I think uh, the questions are tough. There is one question in number systems, which is not an easy question. It is a slightly tricky question. Uh, also, a lengthy question. The next one is probability. In probability, there are one, two, two questions. The thing is, unfortunately, not many people got it correct, but at least one of the two questions is not a difficult question. It is a fairly simple, basic question. Uh, somebody who is preparing for CAT should get it correct, but in the examination, many people did not attempt it. Amongst the people who attempted it, many of them got it correct, but the majority of them did not even attempt this question, which basically says that people, when they are looking at probability or permutations and combinations, they are scared and they don't attempt it. That should not be the case, because in a difficult section like uh, this one, dash CAT 6, if you actually know the basics of probability on permutations and combinations, you'll get it correct, which is what most of the people who attempted it did. 75% uh, of the people who attempted it got it correct. But the percentage of people who attempted it is less than 20%. So that basically shows that people have this fear, which is not needed. Next, if you're looking at the next topic, which is profit and loss. Profit and loss, uh, normally, I would say that profit and loss, the questions are easy in most of the mocks. In this particular case, the questions are not very difficult, but we try to make them slightly tricky. And because of which, again, I think uh, many people uh, found them intimidating. But if you look at it with a uh, normal, calm mind, without the examination pressure, out of the three questions, I think only one question is definitely difficult. The remaining two, I don't think are difficult. There is one question which is fairly straightforward, and the second one also is not very difficult. There are a total of, I think, three questions in profit and loss. But many people found them intimidating because they are not the run of the mill or the very typical kind of a questions that we give. But if you understand the question, you should be able to get at least two out of those three correct. One is a difficult question. But overall, because they are not straightforward questions, I think many people did not do well in profit and loss. The next one is progressions. This is uh, the question progressions is a very lengthy question. Uh, many people did not get it correct. It is a hard question. With respect to quadratic equations, again, quadratic equations is something that people find it to be scoring. But the question that we gave is the slightly on the tricky side. But again, if you are not intimidated, if you look at it from a, a normal standpoint, it is not even a very theoretical question. You should be able to get it correct. 
but this is slightly again unconventional because of which I think many people did not uh, get it correct. The questions in time, speed and work and time, distance and work were definitely tricky. We gave four questions. Out of those four questions, I think there is one, two, two questions which are straightforward and I think two questions which are difficult in time, speed and work and time and distance. This is as far as quant is concerned, I went through all the questions uh, in detail. Overall, I would say there are at least three questions which are proper sitters. But uh, the problem is when you are getting this kind of a section where you are uh, panicking because the section and the questions are much more difficult than what you expect, which is exactly what happened in CAT 2023, you should be able to keep your calm. And if you keep your calm, you will find those three sitter questions. Another thing which I think many people have missed out this time is in particular topics, if there is a sitter question also, they are not attempting because they are not confident of that particular topic, which is not a good thing. For example, like I mentioned earlier, there is one question in probability, in permutation and combination, which is a fairly simple, straightforward question. But many people have this paranoia towards probability and permutation and combination because of which they didn't attempt that question. So overall, this is a difficult section. If you're looking to score 99 percentile, I think uh, you'll have to score, uh, say, around uh, 27 marks. I think 27 marks is definitely worth uh, getting 99 percentile. Maybe the 99 percentile will even be slightly lesser. Maybe anything about 25, I think you are definitely on par uh, to get 99 percentile. This is uh, overall about how quant was. Looking at the overall percentiles, I think 99% uh, percentile overall will be around say 76. In quant, I think 25, maybe 25 to 27 will be 99 percentile. In LRDA, around 18. Both these, I think, sections were definitely on the difficult side, quant and LRDA. VRC is definitely on the slightly easier side. So, in this uh, mock, you should have ideally scored very well in VRC. The 99 percentile mark for uh, VRC is 39. Similarly, the percentiles for 95 and 80 are also given.